Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 14. Today is day six. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And I am appreciating this wonderful booklet and all of the materials that we're going to use. And a big part of this particular project pack and this particular day is about gratitude. So these are the materials that we're going to use and uh, very thankful for those and for the opportunity to, to draw, to create, and to find a new page in this lovely, lovely book. And today we're going to do the essence of all beautiful art, all great art, is gratitude. And I look at living as an art form, or it's one of our sayings at Zentangle that, that all life is, can be an art form. You can approach it that way. Mm -hmm. and, and the secret of that in Zentangle is to begin with gratitude, and I think the same thing applies to each day. So what I've done here is I'm looking for the middle between the, the lettering and the edge of the paper. And you're using the gray pen. I'm using the gray pen, the gray jelly roll. And I am setting up what we call a reticula, which is a grid in which we're going to put little fragments of tangles, of patterns that we call fragments. So this is a, an approach that we call fragments and, or reticula and fragments. And a reticula is a, a framework that repeats itself, you know, like a checkerboard or a fishnet or something like that, a honeycomb. And in each of those shapes, uh, a particular uh, pattern, pattern or inserted. patterns is, is yep. inserted. And now I am looking to figure out, okay, if I would divide that horizontal line in half and half again, how big would that square be? And it it's, does not have to be precise. You don't have to, like, get a ruler. Just, just a rough eyeball. And I'm going to draw another line. And take your time. Figure out which way you like to draw your lines. I know that I mention this all the time, but I, it works with my hand to draw them toward me. Uh, you can explore different ways. So over here, I am doing the same thing, but I'm not going to draw it totally straight the whole way. I'm going to start out straight, but now I'm going to slightly turn my book, and I'm going to arc down toward the corner. And this is going to show us one of the magic properties of reticulas and fragments is that you can bend and twist and sort of like uh, silly putty yeah. the, uh, the reticula. It makes it so interesting. And it, it creates yeah, this interesting optical effect, but it's really easy to figure out what to do within each distorted reticula. And, and you'll see that as we go along. So now I'm <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> going in through the the uh, right the stitching. So now I'm going to look for the middle here, the middle ish. All of this is ish. So just be aware that if it's not exactly in the center, it's still going to be so beautiful and work. Yeah, it's going to work. So you know, be uh, just let's. I invite you to trust the process of seeing it through all the way, even if you do something in your book that you say, but it doesn't look like whatever on the screen. Just stay with the steps and allow yourself that um, suspense, suspend your judgment, okay? So this is our reticula. I'm now going to switch from, my, from the jelly roll to the PN black. And now in each one of these, I am going to put an orb. And I set for myself a little game, is that I would make clockwise orbs throughout. Normally I do them counterclockwise, but I thought, okay, as an exercise, let's do them clockwise. And I'm really enjoying that exercise. I like doing things a little different. 
And uh, so this is, is one of those efforts. So what that does is make you concentrate more on the, on the line that you're creating, whereas if it's always too predictable, you might l start thinking about something else. So exactly. And seeing that other one it is a little bit ovalish, right? See That's how I fun, make this? Right? So since that reticula is stretched out, well, I'll stretch the orb out a little bit, OK? So now we've got an orb in each reticula. Now we're going to do a takeoff and land. So I'm taking off from the corner, landing on the orb. Take off from the corner. So I'm going to trace that outer line just a smidge and then land and taxi to a halt, so to speak. So it's a C shape. Right. And this is an exploration of the tangle well. So I'm using a well fragment in each one of these. But we're going to draw groups of them. Now this next one is going to reflect it. It's going to be the opposite, right? Right. So it's still a C shape, but it's going in the other direction. And you, you know, you know, just imagine a mirror between those two fragments, and what would the mirrored image look like? And that's what you do. So we're going to do this sequence of mirroring throughout this entire set of reticula. Taking your time, I wrote, I found a way that, OK, this is what my hand looks like, likes. OK, so there's the first row. Figure out what your hand likes, and then hold the book that way, the same for each one. And in that way, each one has a similar feel. So just enjoying the process, mirroring each one. So just like side to side in the top row mirrored, then the one above and below mirrors. and then everything mirroring itself since it's, you know, a, a f grid like that, it all works out. So this is turning out in itself to be these really neat, what we call meta shapes. And we saw that in the, uh, in the paradox one I did earlier, where across the boundaries of these reticula, you start to see these cool patterns. So now look, in this distorted one, you still know exactly what to do. You just begin, take off in the corner, and then land on the orb. And you don't even need to think about the fact that it's distorted, because you're just doing the same thing. Take off and land. There you go. This gives us wonderful opportunity to take a pattern and play with ways that you might want to, like, stretch it this way and that. Like, I remember taking a silly putty on the comics, the Sunday comics, when you, you got newspapers, and you would uh, stick it on and then pull it and, and watch different ways how the characters stretched. See, so just from the corner to the orb. And you don't even have to think about it being not a perfect square. So now you can begin to see how, you know, if your squares weren't perfectly square, it becomes less and less of a big deal. Very pretty. Right? So this is the first step in, in doing well. And I'm going to add a, whoops, I wanted to, no, we're going to do it clockwise. So even my little dots, I'm going to do those clockwise. I'm going to put a, some solid color in the middle of each one of these orbs or ovals. An oval is a sort of a squishy orb. Just a nice bit of contrast. So. I'm going to look at this as four sections of four reticula. And we're going to do something different in 
each one of those sets of four. So it's like a quadrant. A quadrant. Four, so four sections. In this quadrant, which is the first one on the second page, I'm drawing again, taking off, and pretending I'm about to land on that center orb, but I'm aiming for it, but just like in Holobar fashion, I stop at that line. See, it would have continued onto the orb, and so this gives this sort of like petal or propeller look. This uh, tangle that we're, we're doing was inspired by a, uh, like a jewelry box or a treasure box that we saw in a museum from times of medieval, like knights in shining armor. And it was, if you look up on the uh, newsletter, you can see the original. Just uh, do a search on that page for well. So we do that on the top row, and we'll do it on the bottom row. So I'm going to do the whole second page with that additional stroke. Start, take off in the corner, and aim for the center, but stop right there. And again, with this distorted one, you're just going to use the same principle. Start in the corner, aim for that center oval, as if you're going to land on it, and stop there. And you don't even have to worry about the distortion. You just follow the same principle, and it all works out. Right? So now we've got uh, two different developments of that original uh, arc. And you'll notice that the elemental stroke in this is an orb and a C shape. And here in this last set of four, I'm starting from the tip and taking off and then auraing on the line that goes all the way to the orb. The longest line. The right. longest line. And this little tidbit here was inspired by a uh, flower that Maria and I saw. It was this beautiful <coughs> white and yellow flower, and it had that lovely little fold on it. It was an Australian flower that I had uh, illustrated ah, for a okay. friend of mine who was sending it to, to a friend in Australia, and I can't remember what it's called. It was a white-ish, and then we saw it. In know, Bermuda. In Bermuda, yeah. You can see how this is reflected. And again on the distorted one, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Just take off and, and move away from that arc just ever so. Right? Taking your time, rotating your book appreciating every stroke. Okay, so now we can see how that has transitioned. And now I'm going to uh, go back with my gray jelly roll, and I'm working on the second no. quadrant. Oh, the second quadrant on the first page. On the first page. And I'm just going to put these straight-ish lines from the edge to the point of whatever, you know, that like squished Huggins shape. It's like a fan, isn't it? It's like, like a fan like, shape. It's like a fan shape. It's very, now I'm, I'm sort of curving it, but you don't even need to curve it. Later on, I discover that I'm just going to do straight lines. And I'm, in this case, just going from the edge. And look, I'm turning my book pretty much every time I do a line. So I like to have my whole arm on the table because then I can relax my arm and just really focus on, on the stroke. And if you need to take a break, just you know, stretch your hand, uh, get up, move your shoulders back. You take, can always take pause, a deep the, breath. 
pause the video. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to be pausing <laughs> and seeing this a lot. And going know. back, you know, pause, go back. back, yeah. But even when you're lost in entangling, you know, just remind yourself to, uh, you know, check your posture, check your breath, and relax. So this is one uh, reticula. And now I'm going to do what I did in that single reticula in the other three in that second quadrant. All one stroke at a time. Just pay attention or attend your attention to each stroke as you're making it. So it sort of ends up to be paradox. It is very bizarre because it does. Yeah, it ends up to be. And I was thinking, oh, he's not doing paradox on this one, but he is. Yeah, <laughs> you'll see. At, at the end, I, I, uh, sh I bring the other page of the book, of another, the other book that I did, Paradox, in, and just to show it. So this is a fascinating little um, discovery or lesson or exploration that you can get to a similar uh, result from two different directions and maybe more and that so many of the tangles that we do uh, overlap in ways that we continue to discover or you get to the same result in a different series of strokes yes so in this case we drew the curve first right but it ends up being a similar look so there's the second one second quadrant. So now on this third quadrant, I'm going to make that center line disappear. And the way I'm going to make it disappear is make it part of a texture behind those little petals or propellers. And because I like to see the line that I'm auraing, I'm going to, and since I'm right-handed, I aura to the right of the line. And I'm just going to go through all of the ones in one direction in that quadrant. You know, I, I guess I could turn the book each time and do one reticular than the other. But I'm just going to do all of them in one direction and then all of them in the other direction. So you can see now that that center line has essentially disappeared in the midst of that, those textured lines. So we'll put those in that direction, and then we'll put them in this direction. So even though the reticula is still there, it doesn't appear to be there. And it sort of uh, blends with those vertical lines that go into the fan as well. It's a nice transition. Right? So let's uh, work on our fourth quadrant. And on the fourth quadrant, I'm going to do exactly what I did on the third quadrant. I'm going to... Uh, put those vertical lines in, but we're going to treat it a little bit different when we shade it. So again, you can see on this distorted one, use the same principle, even though it's going in a different direction, and we're just auraing the outer line. So if you were to say, okay, take this picture and distort it, it might be like, what do I do? But uh, look at that. How cool, right? So we've got the ink down. So now with your graphite pencil, in this first quadrant, I'm going to shade it. Well, you can see how I'm shading it, where those arcs come in the little you know, corner of where the arc hits the orb. I'm putting down some graphite, not all the way. And then I'm going to come in with the tortillon and make it so like it's going under, right, itself. So right. each one of these. It's like weaving. Right. 
So now we're getting some uh, sense of dimension. And again, the, the, w using the side of the tortillon, it will uh, last a lot longer. And it also feathers the graphite out in much more gentle transition. So we've got that sense of over and under there. And we're going to take that same approach and do it on each one and then come back in with the uh, with the uh, tortillon and smooth those all out. So you can you can now start to see how this is uh, having an overall sense across the reticula. So the So as I'm looking at it, I realize, okay, I want to make that go all the way across the top. And there's enough graphite in each reticular that I can pick it up on the tortillon and just move it around. This is a really great tool, and this paper actually works really, really well with the graphite. So there's the first quadrant. Pretty. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do with this next one. And I'm going to shade it by adding graphite just the opposite of the one in the first one. Right, I was just going to say it's just the opposite. So we're putting it in the, in the little where all those lines come together. I'm going to work with the fact that that is, you know, that there's more lines there. And I'm going to enhance that darkness with graphite and then pull that out so that they're overlapping. It's different shapes overlapping in a different way. And I, I think, you know, what I, was, what I was looking at in this is how do you take a, the basic structure of a tangle, in this case, well, and then, uh, and then what can you do with it? So this is an invitation to everyone to play with tangles and notice that at different stages, wow, I could do something different with this and I can enhance it by shading or filling it with something else. And where might I go with that? And how might it match with other ones uh, next to it? So for anyone who got the, uh, uh, the project pack about transitions, this is actually would have been a great one for transitions, right. how, yeah. how one tangle can morph into another one or inspire another one. And the steps between. Right. Yeah. So same basic structure, and you can see the, uh, the difference. So on this third quadrant, I am going in and adding some graphite where one propeller in that, like, uh, you know, in that sort of angle where the propellers overlap, not really up towards the circle, but just where those uh, petals or propellers overlap. I'm going to put a little graphite, and then I'm going to use the tortillon to just pull it out in this nice, gentle transition, so to speak, onto the rest of the petal or blade. And that's what we will repeat in each one of these, uh, these four on that quadrant. So we've got a nice, you know, one of the things that I try to uh, think of is, is keeping the light and the dark separated. So you've got some contrast. So that's, that's that fourth one. How's that coming? Oh, it looks great. Right? It looks great. It's very magic. I'm, I'm so mesmerized watching you. I'm having a hard time commenting here. <laughs> so on this last quadrant, I'm going to put uh, graphite right in that corner, right up to the circle. Because again, I want to keep the, the light and the dark separated and, and to play with the, the options of light and dark. And then I'm going to 
uh, shade the background just in those little crooks there, those little, you know, where the petals come together. And I'm, I'm enjoying doing it on this one because they're separated, the shading is separated by that fold on the petal where it wasn't on the, the third quadrant. So we can really play with the, the light and the dark back and forth. So again, we're going to bring that out and sort of enhance the fold on that, on that petal. And all of this was just curves, dots, orbs, straight lines, just put together in a very repetitive manner. So again, just tease that out, remembering to leave some part of the, the fragment unshaded so you've got the contrast. Although I guess you could shade the whole background right. evenly, just like those lines are even. But this gives even more texture to that texture. You have choices. Yeah. And, and it's your choice, and, you know, and play with it. And, and the idea of planting these ideas is that there are more ideas that you will discover and plant. So that's, again, the whole uh, idea behind this is to share the, you know, or to inspire the idea for you to come up with things that no one else has come up with right. yet. And it'll happen. You know, oh, yeah. It'll sneak in and all of a sudden, oh, I've never seen that before. So what do you think? Very, very, right? very cool. Same the transition initial structure. is wonderful. So just to take advantage of how this green ink can go over the black, I'm just putting a dollop in the middle. and A tiny dollop. A tiny dollop <laughs> so that it retains the black framing. Right. Watch out because it takes a while to dry. Yeah. Very cool. Just that softens a little it just bit a of little color. Bit, right? Yeah. Then find a place for your chop to sort of own, not sort of, to own this. I mean, you created it. An artist signs their creations. And you add that in, however that is. Of course, making sure that was all dry yes. first. <laughs> I was just going to say, oh, right. my God, don't do that. I'll splat. <laughs> And then just to revisit the whole idea that the essence of all beautiful art, all great art, is gratitude. That's how we start tangling. That's how we finish tangling, is to appreciate and be grateful. You're here. And life is an art form, so there you go. Yeah, so what Maria was saying earlier, look, we ended up with similar results from totally different directions. Right. Thank you so much for enjoying this with us. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye now. Beautiful. Beautiful.